Have you any time examined whether we're really alone in the universe? Then again, assuming that there's another thing to our world other than what we see, envision a situation in which the James Webb Telescope finally exhibits that we live inside a black hole. Oblige us as we find out more about this important news that will make you question all that you thought you had some consciousness of the universe. So what exactly are black holes? They're like something out of a terrible dream. Sure, you might have seen them in sci-fi motion pictures, but it's impressively more startling. They're not just that. As shown by specialists, thoroughly black holes in space are considered enormous amounts of matter fit into an exceptionally small region. Consider a star, many times more massive than the sun, all pressed into a circle the size of New York City. The gravitational pull is so intense that nothing, not even light, can escape from it. Analysts have been fascinated by black holes for quite a while. Since then, they've considered objects in space so tremendous and thick that they could trap light. The most well-known ideas about black holes were anticipated by Einstein's theory of general relativity. Essentially, when an immense star says no thanks to it, it abandons a thick center. Assuming the center's mass is many times that of the sun, gravity overwhelms everything, leading to the creation of a black hole. It is no easy task to recognize black holes because they radiate no light. Anyway, analysts have found ways to deduce their presence by noticing their influences on neighboring matter. For example, if a black hole goes through a mass of interstellar matter, it will pull that matter towards it in a process called accretion. Moreover, when a normal star gets too close to a black hole, it can get destroyed, emitting X-rays as it does so. Black holes also massively affect their environments. They can consume nearby stars, emit strong gas blasts, and even affect the formation of new stars in some regions while slowing it down in others. However, where do black holes come from? Imagine stars once massive and exploding, meeting their extreme doom in a stunning event called a supernova. From the remains of these fallen giants, black holes emerge. Most black holes are born from massive stars that have reached their celestial retirement party in a supernova blast. Smaller stars, when they die, transform into something many refer to as neutron stars, which are extremely dense but not dense enough to trap light. Anyway, if a star is several times the mass of our sun, it collapses under its own gravitational force, forming a black hole. As these collapses happen, something odd occurs near their surfaces. Time itself starts to play tricks. From the perspective of someone far away, time appears to slow down near the event horizon, the last point of no return for anything falling into a black hole. It's as if the star's clock ticks at a different speed compared to our own. Sometimes, when two smaller black holes collide, they merge to form a much larger and more terrifying black hole. And if a black hole interacts with a neutron star, they create a massive nightmare that defies comprehension. Scientists have been grappling with the scale of these enormous phenomena for quite a while. Black holes come in two sizes, big and small. There's a sinister mystery surrounding them that we can't quite unravel. However, here's the catch. Small is relative when it comes to black holes. Very gigantic black holes, the remnants of monstrous stars, can be as large as 10 to multiple times the size of the sun. There could be upwards of 10 million to a billion of them in the Milky Way alone. That's a cosmic number of black holes that could swallow anything in their way. However, wait, there's something even more enormous. Very large black holes are on the far end of the spectrum. They are millions, if not billions, of times greater than the sun. They exist at the center of giant galaxies, including our own Milky Way. It's like a massive dark void pulling everything toward it. Famous physicist Stephen Hawking talked about black holes throughout his life. His lectures were always insightful, though some of his theories couldn't be confirmed due to a lack of necessary equipment. However, there's hope on the horizon. A single scientific instrument is making a huge difference, and we're not prepared for it. It goes by the name of the James Webb Space Telescope, also known as JWST, and it's here to delve into the depths of our universe. Let me tell you, the JWST is no ordinary telescope. It's an engineering marvel, a testament to the power of human desire. Sure, we've launched other space telescopes before, and they've done their jobs fine and dandy. But this bad boy is truly incredible. 
the JWST makes the Hubble, which has faithfully served us for years, look like a simple speck in the universe. And the price tag for this cosmic miracle is an astounding $10 billion. Yes, you heard that right, that's enough zeros to make your head spin. And get this, it took the combined efforts of NASA, the European Space Agency, and the Canadian Space Agency to bring this miracle to life, as well as the precious contributions from more than 300 universities. But let's not forget the risks that come with such an ambitious endeavor. I know this isn't a project for the faint-hearted. The JWST is venturing into unfamiliar territory, pushing the boundaries of what we know, and taking us to places we've only dreamed of. After a successful launch, NASA recently announced that the telescope has enough fuel to last more than twice its base mission life. Since its launch, the JWST has achieved numerous incredible feats. It traveled more than one million miles to reach its orbit around the sun, where it will remain for eternity. During its journey, the telescope successfully deployed its massive five-layer sunshield and giant primary mirror, both of which had to be folded to fit into the launch vehicle. Now, after NASA has aligned and calibrated it, the telescope is nearly ready for full operation. One of the most fascinating parts of the James Webb Space Telescope was when NASA announced it had captured its first images of starlight. The first picture taken by the telescope was of a star called HD 8446, resulting in a mosaic of 18 scattered bright spots from the star's light, captured by the 18 mirror segments on the primary mirror. NASA later released another stunning image of HD 8446, in which 18 unfocused copies of the star were combined into a purposeful hexagonal arrangement. Once the observatory successfully aligns the individual segments of the primary mirror, it will begin the image stacking process, merging 18 images into one clear view. Thanks to its cutting-edge technology, the JWST will assist researchers in studying the early stages of the universe after the Big Bang. It will focus on what happened after the first stars formed, a period known as the Epoch of Reionization. This era refers to when neutral hydrogen was reionized, made to have an electric charge again by radiation from these first stars. This includes looking back billions of years, which is only possible with a powerful telescope like the JWST. The telescope will also help researchers in discovering exoplanets, which are very difficult to identify because of the way they interact with their host stars. Its powerful sensors will be able to observe these planets in more detail, including in some cases imaging their atmospheres. Understanding the atmospheres and conditions of these planets could help scientists better predict whether certain planets are habitable or not. Besides studying the formation of planets, scientists are studying galaxies to understand how matter is organized on a large scale. This, in turn, allows us to see how the universe evolved, how the spiral and elliptical galaxies we see today developed from different shapes over billions of years. One of the JWST's goals is to look back at the earliest galaxies to better understand that evolution. Researchers are also trying to figure out how we got the range of galaxies that are visible today and how galaxies continue to form and evolve. Anyway, most significantly, the James Webb Space Telescope will help us answer the biggest questions of all. Are we alone in the universe? And are we living inside a black hole? The JWST has already been on the hunt. And guess what it found? Compounds called polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, PAHs, hiding around those enormous, supermassive black holes in three active galaxies. These carbon-based molecules with ring-like structures are like the goth kids of the universe. They're everywhere, from distant galaxies to comets in our solar system. Now, they're not just intriguing because they could be the building blocks of life, but also because they help astronomers track star formation. When ultraviolet radiation hits these PAHs, they glow and emit infrared light, a signal that can be detected by the JWST's mid-infrared instrument, MIRI. This is typically a sign that there are some hot, young stars nearby. But wait for the twist. A curious astrophysicist, Ismail Garcia Bernard from Oxford University, decided to investigate three active galaxies known as NGC 6552, NGC 70319, and the famous Stefan's Quintet, located millions of light years away in the depths of darkness. Now, what Garcia Bernard found will make your hair stand on end. In those central regions where the black holes dominate, he found a ton of PAHs. Sounds great, right? Well, here's where it gets chilling. 
The radiation near those supermassive black holes distorted the pHs, essentially transforming them into larger, electrically neutral versions of themselves. The smaller, electrically charged pHs vanished into the void. Imagine being consumed by the darkness itself. But wait, there's a glimmer of hope? Or maybe not. The real question here isn't whether we're alive. It's whether we truly exist. Does everything around us exist because of the black hole we re-in? Everything integrates with the theory that maybe we're not just living inside a black hole, but rather inside the event horizon, a line between the universe we know and the unknown. Could it be that everything is connected within a black hole? The James Webb Space Telescope is out there right now, searching for the answers to the unknown. Stay tuned, and maybe, just maybe, it will make all of us rethink what we thought we knew about existence. The truth might be far more twisted than we realize. In the fascinating world of astrophysics, few topics have generated as much intrigue and mystery as black holes. These cosmic entities, with their ability to warp space-time and consume everything in their vicinity, have long been the subject of both scientific study and popular imagination. The statement, we finally found what's inside a black hole, made by renowned physicist Michio Kaku, taps into the awe and curiosity surrounding these enigmatic objects. But what does Kaku mean by this bold assertion? Has science finally unlocked the secrets of what lies within the event horizon of a black hole? To understand Kaku's statement, we need to take a step back and explore the nature of black holes, the current state of research, and the significance of the latest discoveries in the field. The nature of black holes. A black hole is an area in space where the gravitational pull is so strong that not even light can escape it. This phenomenon is the result of a massive star collapsing under its own gravity after it has exhausted its nuclear fuel. When this happens, the star's core contracts, and if the mass is great enough, it forms a singularity, a point of infinite density where the laws of physics as we know them break down. Surrounding this singularity is the event horizon which marks the boundary beyond which nothing can escape, not even light. For centuries, the existence of black holes was only theoretical. The concept first emerged from Albert Einstein's general theory of relativity, but it wasn't until the 1960s and 1970s that scientists like John Wheeler, Roger Penrose, and Stephen Hawking began to develop the mathematical framework that would bring black holes into the realm of accepted science. However, even with this theoretical understanding, Black holes remained a subject of speculation and mystery. What happens beyond the event horizon? Is it possible to peer into the interior of a black hole? Or is it completely inaccessible? The event horizon and its mysteries. The event horizon of a black hole represents a boundary that once crossed, there is no turning back. It is often described as a point of no return. Once something passes this threshold, it is drawn inexorably toward the singularity at the center of the black hole, where it is crushed to infinite density. Despite their importance in the black hole model, the event horizon is not something we can directly observe. In fact, the very definition of a black hole comes from the fact that light cannot escape its gravitational pull. This has made the study of what lies beyond the event horizon exceptionally challenging. Historically, black holes were thought of as cosmic prisons, where information about the objects falling into them would be lost forever. This idea was encapsulated by the so-called information paradox, which arose from the work of Stephen Hawking. In the 1970s, Hawking proposed that black holes could slowly evaporate due to a process known as Hawking radiation, a quantum phenomenon that suggests black holes slowly lose mass over time. If this radiation carried away all the information about what had fallen into the black hole, it would violate a fundamental principle of quantum mechanics known as unitarity, which states that information must be preserved. This paradox sparked decades of debate, with some 